Hello everybody and welcome to our wonderful world of the ESL1 Frankfurt Qualifier. That's right, we've been doing Manila non-stop over the last few weeks. As everything is just so overlapping in the world of Dota 2, we are headed directly into our Frankfurt Qualifier in the first round of our double elimination European bracket. It was only announced today, so it's hot off the press, a fresh pancake, add that maple syrup and enjoy. I'm Toby1, I'll be your cast for tonight. We're doing Priest versus No Diggity, and luckily I am not alone. I am joined by the man who was with Capitalist earlier today and has been so gracious to join me for our first series as well tonight. Modpacks, welcome back, man. I will gladly be the maple syrup to your pancake. It's a good thing you found a Canadian, you know. Really? Someone someone it's to get this pancake. done properly like. It, it may have, it may have been intentional, uh, but also I was a big maple syrup kind of guy in my pancakes and waffles. Pancakes and waffles. That's what it's all about. I hope everyone's hungry. <laughs> Oh, not hungry. I hope everyone's very satisfied with the food they've recently eaten. Let's get into our game, man. We're, we're already starting up our draft, and, uh... Well, I'm not going to be too surprised with OD, Earthspirit, and Enchantress finding their way into the BAM pool. Uh, but Puck, the respect for Koitfa continues. I speak for the yeah, that's actually insane uh, really to be seeing that. Like, yeah, there's not that much wiggle room right now, I don't think, to justify a lot of like kind of out there first bands. So, uh, when it comes to you know Quickva, though, I guess they just don't like they 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 just respect like their own pucks so much that they don't want to like give it away. I guess I don't know. Either way, um, I definitely like the Invoker pickup just because of the fact that. Uh, they over on priest like these aren't the same priest guys that a lot of people might be remembering um that was like Zenigata and crew and jedrox and they ran bane like every game but this is a different squad um that were recently signed after the other one was disbanded so these guys uh, full different lineup five completely different players and they've been loving the invoker loving the beastmaster was their big thing and i was just you know going through a couple of their games and stuff they even run some like core faceless void like one position stuff so they're a little bit out there do they yeah, do they win any of those games yeah they won the faces void one now it's hard to tell just from the um there's no replays available because it was like a pre pre-qualifier thing but it was a beastmaster and faces void is like a dual core it's pretty sick but hey. not gonna be happening in this game no faces voice didn't belong to no diggity in this game and uh no surprise there kizu is actually being for me one of the outstanding He's outstanding so offlaners everyone kind of knows that in this patch offlaners have been getting the rough end of most sticks uh but his faces boy chronos have been right Dying on the mark he creates so much space for koifa to do his work and era seems to be this consistent one for no diggity should also point out too diggity is still on a nine game win streak it hasn't been it hasn't been stopped yet. Their first series they played when they formed this roster, they ended up going 1-1-1-1-1-1. Ever since then, it's been 0-2 in their favor against Vega, VP, LC, and Spirit. Up against Priest, you gotta say that uh, actually I gotta say them correctly as well as Praise. Praise is the way you meant to actually pronounce it. Uh, Ooh, up, against, up against Praise, yeah! Uh, we looked it up after one of the casts where we're just like, how the hell did you say this? And we kept saying it like Prius. And we're like, oh, they're a really bad car. Uh, it's like, no, they're actually, it's Praise. Uh, is the way to say it. Because they got the last game in the Team Spirit 1-1. One, one. Uh, they're actually in a nine game win streak at the moment. Looking to continue it. Yeah, it's actually kind of crazy. Like, a lot of people, I mean, there was a lot of hype surrounding this roster for No Diggity, so I think a lot of people are pretty excited to see them doing so well over in Dreamlink, uh, as well as Epicenter 2. So, uh, been pretty exciting following them. Yapsor, man, he's been making some pretty insane plays. Him and Kezu uh, paired up with the Enigma, which obviously did get banned out once that Faceless Void's in play. Um, but they've been making some really nice combinations together, a lot of that AoE lockdown. So, uh, I'm kind of hoping we were uh, going to get the uh, Enigma today. That was, that was like, my, my hopes and dreams. Well, you may. This is a best of three. That's true. <laughs> so, we have another potentially two games coming your way. Hello, Team Global. Not the full Team Global we saw from Team Spirit the other day. Also interesting to note too, that the only other team which you, would, which you would first ban out a puck against would actually be Team Spirit. Because what Iceberg's been doing recently on that hero. Yeah, if he doesn't get OD, it's like... <laughs> it's pretty much just gonna hop over the puck or something for him. Um... One thing we didn't really touch on, I guess, too much was just the fact that uh, Price has opened up here with Beastmaster Nature's Prophet. That is definitely not the most popular one-two 
Obviously, a lot of people like SP Spencer can be run in the four role. I mean, these guys apparently have been running it in the really wacky kind of like ones or uh, sort of positions, but you're you're kind of giving it away right away that one of these two isn't going to be doing exactly what you're suspecting. Um, and now with the Zeus, like, uh, I could be expecting something super greedy. Like, if they really felt like there wasn't going to be enough pressure, they could actually go back for something like the Spectre, which would be pretty wild, but... And what, push the Prophet into the jungle? Or push uh, Beastmaster, Beastmaster into the jungle? Beastmaster. Yeah, like that Iron Talon 4 position's actually been pretty popular. Um, I, but with I, a Bane Marana, yeah, that's scary. You can't do that against No Diggity. No Diggity gonna hunt you down so hard that, yeah, you you can't get away with that kind of Ten stuff. Seconds. And your off lane, it would just be left for dead. It's the, it's the beauty about running a Marana safe lane seconds. as well. Uh, all, all you need is that rotation from the Bane. You get one Nightmare, Marana should have the levels, Reserve leap into a good top. position, follow up with Arrow, and then you just need one other support to do its work. Uh, I was actually looking for no diggity to have the uh, the enigma in this game. Because right now it doesn't really feel that uh, pra uh, praise, praise mm. uh, are capable of forcing the issue. Like Beastmaster takes time before he comes online. Uh, Nature's Prophet takes a little bit of time before he's able to do a heavy amount of damage, even though he still has to rotate. So he has to try and make things work with the Zeus. Uh, and Lion's rotation early on is very slow. So they needed something more like a... Okay, they are going to get greedy. Um, that's really greedy. Uh, yeah, they need, they need something that actually brings the lion in close, but now they don't have that at all. They actually are going to have to run this four-position Beastmaster or four-position Nature's Prophet to make the PL work. But no, I think he could just walk all over him right now. I'm actually very concerned for uh, for, for Praise. I think the reason, like, Nodig even went for the Spectre ban, and I think possibly it's because they're already thinking about committing a lot of resources into the mid lane. Like, the Faceless Void is someone who you don't really want to be dealing... Like, if he can live up there, that's kind of the dream anyway, just getting all those levels, getting that early chrono, and then his rotations are there. Um, pressuring is great, for sure, but uh, it is going to impact, like, his EXP overall, whereas this way, he's still going to get what he needs in the top lane, should be totally fine, because of that greed of the Beastmaster, and then they can just focus on, like, shutting down the Zeus early on, or even even just the Nature's Prophet who might be hanging out in that uh, off lane. Just like the rotations from the Banes, Smokes, they have a lot of freedom to move just throughout that like lower half of the map. Ben's going to be the final pickup here from No Diggity. So we'll actually have a support Marana being played by Yapsaw as opposed to what No Diggity would be normally doing, which is having Era on that Marana role. They wanted something to deal with the Phantom Lancer. So this actually makes the rotations from No Diggity a little bit scarier because you've got flying arrows coming in from everywhere. Yeah, this is good. So look at the immediate scout. Looks like they didn't figure anything out though, so um, shouldn't be too surprising. I'm pretty sure Diggity know exactly what's going on here, and I'll be interested to see like how are they going to pressure the Beastmaster. Hmm. I wonder if they even really need to. I, if the Beastmaster wants to farm up, that's going to be fine. But they're also going to look for their for their sweet timing. So you you don't want to bring this Ven into any kind of major battle just yet. You actually I'd almost play the greed game with this Ven. Where you get the helm of the Dominators, just start, start stacking up Ancients, secure your side of the map, and any kills you get in the lanes in the meantime is just going to work for you. If this Zeus, which is actually going to the mid lane, I was, I was kind of hoping that they'd run the PL against the Invoker, just because the PL harassment against the Invoker is so much better. Like the Zeus, Moon was telling me about this yesterday, the only way you can play a Zeus versus an Invoker or an OD or any other hero who like you don't want to just have like an even trade with, uh, it actually, it was actually up against the OD talk, but I still took it a little bit further. Um, is to basically spam out every bit of mana you've got, be as aggressive as you possibly can, and keep that mid hero off the lane. That's the only way to do it, because the EMP, yeah. the EMP burn is going to hurt you like hell if this is a Quas Wex build, and if it's actually just a Quas X sort, then you're going to get harassed out by Forge Spirits anyway. So you just need to spam everything you got, get as much as you can, and force the Invoker to farm under his tower. The other um, major problem he's going to have is that, obviously, with the Zeus, you know, the big thing he's going to be needing is all these runes. And with a Beastmaster in the jungle, there's not going to be much help for that. Um, ideally, he wants to, like, rotate top as the Beastmaster and get bounty runes. And you'll see that quite a bit, just because, uh, obviously, that's going to make your jungling a lot faster. And then Mastermind goes bottom, but there's a Marana and a Bane. So, like, runes are, like, a total no-go for him. Uh, unless he's going to have, like, TPing in Nature's Prophet to a system or something. And then you're just, you know, it's a winning trade for D uh, Dig at that point. Yeah. 
Okay, so Mikey is keeping his uh, the biggest distance he possibly can in that bottom lane. Being watched by an observer ward doesn't make life any easier, but with the Treants on the side, he at least knows he can contest against the supports. Okay, Syndrin really wants to get that, those Treants gone. And when you start brain sapping out Treants, even taking that much damage. And what's Lion really meant to do on this top lane? He he can he can't really burst damage down a faceless void. Neither can the Phantom Lancer. Like you come in, you throw out your stun, you throw out your lance, you won't get the kill from that, he just time walks away. Yeah, they need more levels on the line first before you're actually gonna be able to get anything, but for now it's some really nice trades for Kezu. He can just get the four man shield now when he wants, and they're gonna have a very hard time dealing with him. Pulls will start finally happening here on the bottom lane for Diggity. So they can pull through. It should be very easy for Mikey to, to stop because he obviously he's got a like a decent army of treants. So this pull through shouldn't be happening right now with Yapsaw. He's still gonna end up losing the range creep, but Ira is perfectly alright with this. Drag his own creep wave back. He can actually drag it further back past the tower. Because this creep wave is now gonna push out with a wave and a half. So Mikey gets the farm on the on the side camp. And he's actually not gonna come over in time. That's actually really good denying from Yapsaw to keep his creeps low. And you can see they fully rotated the Bashrock down after that uh, top rune too, so... It does give a lot of space to Kezu, but they need these runes on the Mastermind, or it's just, like, total disaster for them. I'm really I mean, surprised he... that, uh, the Diggity, um... I actually thought they'd go for a smoke gank, like, they got their smoke sitting over on Yapsaw. But move... Okay, maybe they're waiting for the boots on Yapsaw, that makes sense. So Cinder and Yapsaw go over to the side. And I still know where Mikey is. Yapsaw could go for a blind arrow, but Mikey's doing some really good work with his tree positions. Yeah, I think he's trying to like find some sort of an angle through there using that ward, but... He'll just smoke mid instead. Yeah. Not quite able to get that, so... This should be... I don't know, Mastermind, we'll see how cautious he's playing it, because I'm sure Nate's props gonna notice. Oh, the, oh, the fake rotate. back! They actually rotate back down to Mikey. He's got his sentry ward there, but obviously that's not gonna help you when Smoke Hero has come in. The arrow, the tree is gonna tank it! And there was no Sunstrike arriving, and Yapsaw actually ended up then, like, almost panic attacking. Because he ended up taking the Nightmare from the hero, allowing him to walk away. So, a little bit of a miscoordination there from Diggity, and the tree is from Mikey just making it in the nick of time. Yeah, Yapsaw then immediately runs mid, but under a ward. If he hits the arrow, it won't matter, and Mastermind catches it. That's a five second stun on him. And Koifa, Sunstrike, he's actually. He's putting it in a position for Zeus to walk back to the tier 1 tower, not feeling that stun was going to last long enough. But still, first blood goes the way of Team Diggity. Or no Diggity. Man, am I crazy? Like, he just walked through that ward, right? I'm not insane. No, no, you're right. He walked directly through that ward. Uh, now they're going to have a crack at bottom lane. Stormbolt's available. There's no Sunstrike to help him out, but there is no Brain Tap either. The damage is still enough. So Nature's Prophet will also go down the off lane. Well, this is kind of what we were expecting, uh, in terms of the overall, you know, lanes and how these are going to go. Yapsor now, even at the top, farming up with the arrow, can help secure top rune. And they're going to get bottom as well, so Mastermind's going to have to bottle crow here. Uh, you, you called it. Mastermind's just in a world of hurt. Like, his CS is, like, it's 17-0 up against 25-10. It's not the greatest for Azus in the mid lane, but it's the fact that he can't just keep refreshing, and he's a full level behind the Invoker. This is the perfect start for an Invoker, you wouldn't... Yeah, he's actually got his Hand of Midas recipe as well already, Koif, for sitting on that Courier. This is this is actually going to be like a... If he farms it, uh, continues to farm at this rate, like, this is going to be like a 5-6 minute Midas, like, in that gap. Yeah, that's, uh, that's actually gross. And so he'll be getting all those levels up into the Sunstrike nice and early, and you're rocking a Bane, Marana, Faceless Void, like... Oh, not quite getting the one top, but... A little bit of a YOLO arrow there from Yesar. Uh, he was trying to predict that Miku would move himself a little bit further to the left. He was actually like going over there a little bit, but uh, Void needed to be more aggressive, force the PL to run out, even if it was just a simple trigger of a time dilation. It's Marana support too. That's why I was always always weirded out when uh, Diggity said, "You know, what? we're going to play this on our number one position every time." Like let Era play this hero who doesn't really scale well with damage unless he gets farm. Uh, but when you play to support, like it's an instant kill with an arrow to kill off a support hero. 
uh, uh, to kill off a neutral creep. He actually has the advantage of the, of the rotation, not obviously as powerful as the Earth Spirit, but with the rotator, normally you have that issue where you can't keep up in the levels, you fall behind. But with the Marana, this should never be the case, thanks to just the way Arrow works. Yeah, it's a pretty nice little change to the hero, honestly. And, uh, yeah, Sor, I hey, let that one go. Just secure that top rune, and again, bottom dealt with by Cinderin. So, Mikey, having a pretty rough go as well, though. Like, he is way down there, net worth behind the Marana. Um, and, and considering it's supposed to be, like, you know, some sort of a, I would say, a core here, mm -hmm. that Midas is pretty far away for him. Whereas, as is discussed, you know, that one for Koikva already here, rocking up the mid lane. And level six is up on Kezu. I'm curious to see if Mikey can even go for a hand of Midas. Like, your Beast Mantra is at least hitting level 6 in the jungle, so you've you've got some decent farm coming out from that. And it's around the same time as Faceless Void is also hitting his level 6. But with this Nature's Prophet, like, do you not feel like a, like an earlier combat build might be a better choice for him, as opposed to just going in for this catch-up Midas? Oh, uh, looks like he's gonna grab up the treads. I think because the Beast has a head of good enough time, it's fine, because he wants to hit 6, then Roar. He actually just came mid. Conveniently, he takes out a ward to get six, so <laughs> at least there's that for them. But typically, you're looking like uh, you almost play like a bat rider in a lot of scenarios, where once you hit six, you tend to just smoke up and run into the lane. And especially when they have this nature's prophet to TP, you have the thunder god's wrath up and available. Mm -hmm. Surprised he's not opting for that already. Uh, might just get up a against staff first or something. Still feel like uh, Fraser basically playing against a ticking clock. The, the ability for Invoker just to get completely out of control, and like with a lot of other teams, maybe you wouldn't like I wouldn't be so uh, naysayer about it because you're running a like a profit as well as a PL. Your split push potential there is amazing. Your burst potential of match just between the Zeus and the Lion is great, and you got single target lockdown against a, against the vent. So potential to kite era is also quite good. But where my concern is is just how well Koifer has been playing of late. You're giving him a lot of space to start with, and you're also giving Sven. Like, they're the top two net worths on the field right now. The crazy thing is, the Invoker has cracked 4.1k when the Zeus has only just reached 3k, and he's the highest over on Price. And Mikey's now dead. Well, is he? Oh, convenient rotation, though. Uh, Sunstrike doesn't really do enough damage, and Syndra needs to brainstorm some life out. And she takes it out of the ball so he can try and run away. Goodbye. Yeah, Praise, perfect time for the rotation. But again, Cinderin yeah. creates space with his death. Yeah, you know, he's, he's securing Aerith's life. Play's made. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> uh, this is, uh, like, the execution from Praise just has to be essentially flawless at this point. Like, they need to be denying the stacks from the Sven. They need to be getting, I would say, a quick Roshan probably by, like, the 13-minute mark, or else there's just going to be items up on the Sven. And obviously with the Quas Exor and Invoker, like, they can just go do it any time for Dig. So you got to, like, try and make advantage of this Dire side. Use your uh, Beastmaster, the Hawks, and everything, and just try and do it with Treants, honestly. Like, get a pick, go for it, but I don't think you can give that up right now. Watch the stack. What's with the birdies? This is... This is a very slow start to a game. They're looking to turn it up, though. <laughs> they they are. They're, they're waiting for their time to be right. But like, I, I, then again, I don't know who really wants to try and turn it up. Beastmaster is almost completing up his necro book, and he's been freely allowed to jungle to this point. So the experience is actually, even with that jungle up, the experience and net worth is still in favor of Diggity. Cinderin will actually, like, have the ultimate death of disconnection from the server. <laughs> well, the, uh, like, Kessler's just been sitting up here threatening the entire time with Chronosphere. They haven't gone for that big initial play, like the big gank on Miku, but all they've had to do is just, like, this dire ward very handy over here by the, uh, hard camp on the offlane is they did spot Yapsor, so it forces the PL into the jungle just because he doesn't want to get chronoed, so Bastrick's basically just trying to tank the gank right now. Like, his his goal is get as much experience as I can before they, like, they don't want to chrono the lion, right? Yeah. yeah but if, if, so. they, if they have to, they'll take it. Like, mm -hmm. a, a kill is a kill at this point of the game. Like, it's not as though also, like, like Praise have been saying, we're going to be pushing you. We're going to be attacking you. Because you, you look at their lineup, you look at everything that happened. I, like, I touched on it briefly during the drafting phase. But the Prophet's going to take time before he can really do anything because he's been so crippled in the offlane. Uh, you got levels, but 
you don't really have a lamp that will force down towers until they find a kill that won't really happen. So when they rotate, they have to rotate and force to find the kills. What will change it for me, like when, when Praise actually have a moment to attack, is when the Veil of Discord is completed on the Zeus, then you'll have a, a big amplification, and you get that first level Necro book up from the Beastmaster. Their fights are just going to become a little bit more superior in their favor because you're not looking at a mech over on Diggity. Diggity's lineup is pretty much surrounding, um, like, gank, gank, and gank individual targets until you can then afford it. The, the mech's being built over on Yapsaw, but this will take time and it needs to take successful ganks for it to happen. Yeah, I was wondering, I might... Nah, I'm questioning possibly even a pipe too, like... See that just so much lately. Even on these like support Marauders, it's starting to become a more popular item. Like your enchantresses are picking it up a lot too. But if, either if, one, if same was, idea. If there was someone else that could actually mech it for him, I would be all for that. Like especially considering what they're up against in this game. If they can actually stop most of the magical damage, that'll be brilliant for him. But they don't really have a like a hero that would normally build a pipe out of any of them. Especially like the faceless void. Like the faceless void is probably even considering just getting. What is is he just gonna go Vlad's? Yeah, I'll just go Vlad's blink. I'm sure yeah. it's just like it's necessary this game just because you have the Sven and no one else is gonna be building it, so it'll be the perfect item. So I got his helmet dominator as well, so you get like that double action going. Yeah, whoa, that is a freaky. Jeez, I've never seen that helmet before. Like changes the icon and everything. Wait, which Dota one? Two. Which one? Oh, uh, the Sven. <laughs> He's like a cyclops or something. By the yeah, way. what the hell is with that? <laughs> I, I still feel really weirded out that Valve has never done this. Uh, but like, if you if you put it into perspective mode on this Ven, it doesn't give you his his portrait with the set. It gives you the base model. Oh yeah, right. I was I was looking at that yesterday because I'm like I'm wondering how many people get confused with the Marana set. Uh, the Marana set, uh, not the Marana set, um, it's a Crystal Maiden set, which has black hair, not, not blonde hair. So when you zoom in on her, like, you see the black hair, when you click on her in a portrait, she's got the black hair, but when you have perspective mode, when you have any of the little markers down the side, uh, when you have the bars across the top, where obviously the hero's portraits are displayed, they're all the base model ones, as opposed to the custom models. Just, just another thing for those, you know... One of these days we'll keep lowering that skill cap, Toby. We already we got our award markers markers now, and then <laughs> we'll get our tops changed. It's gonna be fine. <laughs> it's it's the it's the small details which Dota two is always praised for. Okay, this is nice. Gonna stack again. Oh, wait, that, that hawk that hawk blocks right. Yeah. What a dick. I know. It's actually like really solid to be doing as a Beastmaster, so it's good to see that coming out at the very least here, trying to slow down on what they're getting on the spin. Oh, they just smoked underneath that, that Dire Observer Ward too. They clearly saw him, and yeah, the pings are coming out. They know the Bane as well as the Marana are on the run, and that's why Zeus is now in the trees. <laughs> in fact, he's backing up so far he's going to farm up the camp next to the side shop. Or is he? Is he? Oh, they're going to rotate him down to the bottom lane. I don't see them killing off Era. I don't know, they need something here. Like, this is so big if they can get something like this, because it will get them into that Veil, into the Necro, and then the next big thing will just be, like, PL Defusal. The trade-off is, here, is though, like, they're, they're now losing. Oh, Allo Chrono, Sunstriker on top of the Beastmaster. Stormbolt's gonna come out as well, so Beastmaster, no way to get out. Aim with that three-level Brain Sap. Got to finish the job very efficiently. So your rotation's gonna fail. First Chrono is triggered in the, and they get a big hero, like that's still a, almost a level 8 Beastmaster that just died, jungle or not. And you get the tier 1 tower in the middle lane to boot. Yeah, that's pretty bad for Prey right now. Like, the, the big target for them has got to be this bottom tower, because it's going to be a thing that really tries to open up this game for them, and... I've seen so many dire teams just knock this down so early lately. It's like the prime focus, obviously, and it does help open up this whole radiant jungle and make life uh, uh, quite a bit easier for the dire side. It's one of the big reasons why dire is being favored uh, much more heavily right now, because it's so much harder to get that same thing when you're playing on the radiant side. But with the death of the beastmaster, like every single time he goes down and this necro gets pushed further and further away, it's, just, it's so hard for him to push this. Yeah, and then all they can do is just wait for Diggity to attack. And they're going to start doing that pretty soon. 
Like right now, it's been some simple rotations because they're just waiting for their timing. This time, the stack will work because there's no Beastmaster Hawk. But you're going to like skyrocket the, fa the farm of this event. And Nero is actually going in for. I, I'm assuming this is just going to be SMY, but he starts with the Yasha. Because I was wondering if, if BKB was his like his item choice here. And you're up against a fair chunk of magical damage. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. I think um, that he can just be greedy enough because of like how well the game's going that he can go for the SMY first. It does look like this push is going to be largely successful though. Um, no rotations coming down yet, and of course they did use the Chrono. So this is perfect for praise. This is like exactly what they need right now. But it's a tower trade-off. Like you just had a full ancient stack go uncontested, but in favor of Diggity. Yes, you take the tier one tower in the bottom lane, but you're gonna lose your tier one tower in the top lane. Diggity actually just dodged that perfectly, and their money continues to skyrocket. But he's gonna have an ether lens pretty soon over on that bane. The Void's Chrono is now back off cooldown. Era has his Ogre Club for his SMY. He's also it's actually Apple belonging to him. Yeah, that output belongs to him, so that's just going to amplify their damage as well. Now, this is uh, that push now coming out, at least from Price. Only one point to the aura. <laughs> Look, we're back in Warcraft 3, down, and I'm so glad I talked about this thing last night. Well, you just, you just have, like, like, a moment where you're like, okay, we accept the game of traits. And the game of traits is, we take your tier 1 and tier 2, you take our tier 1 and tier 2, until exception is not real. They actually go in and find the Sun Strikes on top of the Beastmaster, Koifer, perfect deafening blast. The Wrath of will bounce through, the Thunder Ghost Wrath ensures the kill over on the face of Void, but a heavy amount of damage already done to the Praise lineup. Era so low, that Lance will kill him off. Cinder and try to Nightmare save him, but it's a fraction of a second too late. He'll Fiend's grip on the latest Prophet, keeping him now to fight in Yapsil, lines up for the arrow, but no, it didn't last long enough, and the Nightmare's out of position. Koifer for having to battle up against Miku behind that tier 2 tower, but Miku with no reveal is forced to run away, but he's got no mana for a doppelganger. He's too short, so he Phantom rushes over towards the Absol. Koifer still sticking with him. He's regenerating quickly. He's got the doppelganger available now, uh, Miku, and he'll dodge the arrow as well. Did Bane really just... Cinder and just hunted, hunted down the Nature's Prophet. There goes your doppelganger finally, but Miku can't get the kill over on Yapsol, even with the illusions. They leap away and Yabsol will be fine. Obviously Cinderin then had to die for the cause. Yeah, that ends up being so drawn out. It's a little bit hard to quite get who came out on top there. I mean, I, I gotta say, like the fact that he got that Lance off in the air was massive. He almost got Koikba, but Koikba wisely just baiting him into the tower, then using his Yules at the last moment before dying. So nice plays come out from him and then the Ghost Walk scout out was uh, pretty well played too. I'm but... still going to say Diggity came out on top because they took the tier 2 tower and uh, Praise did not. True, true, true. Should be okay to just grab and make the profit at some point here though. Okay, Spellbolt, they fight again, they go in for it, time dilation, Zeus having a hard time, especially when Era cleaves him out. They go for more with the arrow connecting on the beat smart Sunstrike, because the arrow connected was off target. And they still take out two heroes for Praise finishing off that, uh, that tier 2 tower on bottom lane. Yeah, I'm not sure if that was necessary. <laughs> like, maximum commitment once again, but they got the tower. And uh, I think that you understand just how difficult it's going to be for them to like try and get these trades. But the full mid lane's still there, full top lane. And Digger are in a much better position to be defending those um, versus how this bottom one went. And I'd imagine they probably want to bang this tower down, and probably this one as well, to start opening up Roshan for themselves, because we've reached that point where uh, they kind of... Yeah, I would say they definitely have the advantage going to Rosh, even with the Beastmaster Hawk, just because of like that net worth lead they now have. Yeah. They're in such a strong fighting position, and whenever you got Chrono up, uh, Dickity will back themselves to battle against Price. Because it's still a level 1 Necrobook. Like, if, like a level 1 Necrobook back when was saying, hey, if this would be really good right now, like, the timing for it was nice. But... Now is just nowhere near enough. Like, Era, when he also gets Alacrity buffed up, is doing 140 damage. They they have to be really... Sorry, not 140, 240 damage. Missing 100 out of that. Cinderin, dying again for the cause? Nope. Nope. Yes. Nope. <laughs> oh my god. He TP talked to them yeah. forever. Yeah. He, he TP to where three heroes just went. <laughs> Oh jeez. Alright, well, living. It's fine. Yeah, and they still kill off Nature's Prophet anyway. 
Wow. Things slipping down that big old slope here for Price. The, their big objective, it'll have to be that big defusal blade fight. We've seen this though, like in so many games for Phantom Lancer, where your team gets in this big scrappy engagement, maybe like three heroes die right away, but everyone's weak on the side of dig and the PL shows up with defusal and just wrecks everybody. So it's not it's not totally outside, you know, not not out to lunch or anything, but it's it's certainly a pretty big lead for Dig right now. You are you are holding on to a thin heart, bro. Like, oh yeah. A defusal blade doing that much damage against a, a heavily farmed up team like Diggity. If it happens, it's brilliant. But Miku's going to play his illusion so perfectly. I'm wondering who he even tries to control. Because he's going to have a oh. harder time with that too. With as like Cinderin's building into Glimmer Cape. You have the cleave issue of this Ven, so he's able to take out most creeps almost instantly. Even Marana with Starfall, looks like she hit Narrow on mid lane and said goodbye to Lion. It was not like, keeping the PLs on the field is actually one of the harder tasks for him. Yeah, especially like if Warcry's up though, like, there's no way they can kill that team. The armor is just gonna be ridiculous. Yep. Uh, Yapsaw, yeah, so gonna walk oh. in. He's got a leaf, no leaf available, and Yapsaw will end up going down. Wrath of Venture was also triggered just in case. That hurts. His greaves were pretty close as well. That's easy solo pick off as well. That's going to give more money over to the PL. Finish up that defusal blade of his, which now can be purchased. And they'll instantly go into taking that tier 1 tower. Void is in position. Bane would need to TP in for it. Koifa is not carrying a TP right now. So he has to walk his way into the mid lane. You're still slowing this down quite well. The Wonders of Cleave. Now the Moonlight Shadow goes to work, Sindarin. He's a lot of targets behind the line. Can Nightmare one, Fiend's Grip the other, actually brainstorms and instantly goes into the Fiend's Grip on the Lion? He'll die for his cause! Which was a very interesting cause. Sindarin really wanted that kill on the Lion. It's like, Sunstrike missed, I got this, guys. Well, I, I was actually waiting, I was waiting for him to, uh, to Nightmare. Uh, is she just Nightmare the Zeus and, and then you could Fiend script the Lion or something along those lines or anything else? If you think about like who's really gonna stop him? Like who stops the Fiend script? Like Lion and Zeus are the only ones who have even something that would, that would do that. The PL would have damage, but that's all. Yeah, well, it's that time. Look yeah, at that. that blink. He's doing 460, man. 460 on this vent. Yeah, he's uh, quite the hero right now. I think he's pretty balanced though. I don't think he's that crazy good. Like, he's, I, he's I, good for the pet. I agree. It's just how far he's got ahead in this game. Uh, Lion will be going down right now. Hero's going to lend a Storm Bolt and then just one hit him down. Uh, <laughs> but it's, it's the synergy. It's the synergy you see. Like, you remember the old uh, Spirit Bear buff lineup where you used to run like Ogre Magi? Uh, you had any other buff? What, what were the other buff ups with that? I remember there was a lot of them. You basically yeah, just, you made the immortal bear. That was pretty much your goal. Yeah, the, the dream. Now and it's, it's just like alacrity bear now. No more ogres. Oh, nice arrow. Just but... before the illusion split too. Yep, so I won't find a kill from this. He's backing up, Eero. You got a whole bunch of trees behind you and Zeus. Okay, with that veil of discord, you start to see just how much damage he can dish out. No, oh, of course Koikba gets the eggs like 10 Radiant seconds later, so <laughs> then he would have been able to evoke because Evoke was on cooldown for like 15 more seconds or something or, you know, uh, quite a while before the uh, the Agnims and therefore couldn't sunstrike the PL. I think that would have been a kill. He was really low. It might have been why Yasser overcommitted there as well, thinking that it was like, all right, where's the sunstrike? Koikba, I, I hit him. I arrowed him. Go. I did everything I needed to do. My cause failed me. Uh, Mikey's item choice is a little odd. He's going for an Orchid build over on this Nature's Prophet. The only reason why I say odd is because normally an Orchid is one of those items you pick up when you're ahead in the game. And I'm still trying to work out exactly who it's meant for. Oh, they move yeah. shadow underneath the Observer Ward. Void, leave forward. He's still not going to find anything for this. Without, without the Chronosphere, Diggity don't want to fight just yet. It is a little surprising. Like maybe they're thinking they can uh, silence Kez when he comes in, because obviously you're thinking like, oh, we'll just silence Koikba, but you know, very early Yules, so. Oh, backline's era. 
Now he really just jumped on top of Mikey by himself. The roar is going to go off, and Hira, how much damage have you got? Chronosphere is up, Hira will be locked in, but then again, so will the Fiend script up Beastmaster and the Nature's Prophet, both of which go down. And uh, over on the sidelines, Lion, Cold Snap just in time to stop that TP out. And this game looks pretty well in control uh, to, uh, for no diggity. Yeah, Miku uh, ditched pretty fast there. <laughs> Was he, was he even there to start with, or he must not have been? I thought he was to saw the mana burn on the spend, but now I think about it, it was probably just the Necros, so... I guess he just wasn't there for that engagement. He wouldn't have made a difference. He would have just sided with the rest of his team if he was there. Yeah. The initiation which Diggity got was just too good. And the control factor of the Chronosphere is again, like, this major, major problem. You just don't have a great way out. Like, you look at the heroes and their maneuverability. Like, you're not looking at a Blink Daggering Lion. The best thing they could have working for them is the vision of the Beastmaster. But once the fight begins, it's a simple, we walk away. The only one who could actually really escape is the doppelganger ring PL. He's the only one with a proper escape mechanism. Man, this is a hard lineup to fight into right now. With the heroes that I currently have. It's like, you envision the high ground defense as some sort of like a Zeus spam until they're low, and then maybe they try and retreat, but... Beastmaster's not going to have a blink to help with the pickoff, so it's going to be a very, like, scrappy, kind of like PL chase down, and then that's kind of relying on Dig to make some mistakes here, so as long as they're playing cleanly, it'll just have to be smoke ganks or something from Pruse. Rana sniping boars, that's what we're brought to. Invis room for the faceless boys, going to allow him to walk underneath that hawk. Pruse actually coming along with him, he's got Nagus the Immortal for another minute. They want to try and fight with this, and Void, well, he finds his target, he's got two seconds, one second until Chronosphere is off cooldown. But he doesn't know where the rest of, uh, of Preys are. Now he actually scouts out the Zeus as well. They have an Observer Ward that sees Mikey. There's still not enough information as well as support for him to go for a straight-off kill. Oh, they want it though. Yeah. <laughs> There's your jump. Oh, he can't with the blink with the bear! Denies the rune as well, and Mastermind, well, you is still gonna get there eventually. The stun will follow through and Zeus will go down. As she time-lapsed off all the damage which Zeus did to him. Meanwhile, bottom tier 2 tower was taken out. Well, it is being taken out. Has been yeah, taken it's out. depressing. Man, they got such an early lead on Dig too that Kezu even just sold the ring. He's like, screw this, I'm going straight for my eggs. Like, he bought that blink early instead. Uh, I really like that. I think a lot of people go for the Vlads when it's not really necessary on the face of Void. It's just become like that standard build. Dude, in this game, I think they could build whatever the hell they wanted to and they still wouldn't lose. Unless it was Rapiers and they gave him over. Oh, what an nice arrow. arrow. Beastmaster down. No level 3 Necropulks. He's got no buyback in here. He's going to town over that Nature's Prophet. They're still here for the racks though. So diggity fine kills. And then they move over. They remember, there's no Chronosphere available. They do not want to overstay their welcome. They don't have that big team fight controller. Beastmaster actually... Oh, he only just got enough money to buy back. Yeah. Because he didn't have it when he died. Yeah, like, it ticked over, but... It's not gonna matter. Melee's down already. They back away. Aegis will find out the timing in just two short minutes here. Just good execution from No Diggity. Yeah, very clean game. Not not a lot of mistakes, not a lot of overextensions or anything. Um, I don't even recall like a big dive. So, we'll try a smoke here. Uh, no aggressive radiant vision, at least on that part of the map. So they won't be fully aware they'll use the Hawks to try and scan it out. But this is kind of a textbook play that does tend to happen. So I'm sure that uh, Dick are kind of ready for it. They get a lot of confidence that Kizu, but time walking into a bounty rune next to three smoked up heroes. Maybe not so great yeah. point, but oh, he bridge. blinks out. They miss the Veil of Discord. He's instantly into Invis. And the Ghost Wrath will reveal the position. Raw and Necrobox reveal Koi for just as much. And that's a big kill. Beastmaster taking the 1,000 gold. That's why you saw it. Kizu takes the bird and they immediately panic. Comes up and goes, oh shit, like, they're just a bunch of that. Exactly what you do to your master, but I get there in time. That is, you know, definitely worth the ultimate. No question there. Look at that gold. That has an on Lots of experience. Your heroes. Yeah, that's they need. But, I mean, you know, there's only smoke. Yeah, 
I still feel like this game. I, I don't want to say it. Because we're not allowed to say it. Mm -hmm. We're not allowed to say it. I can say whatever the fuck. Um, <laughs> it's. Feels still right now the price to like on the back people oh. become crazily good. Happen when you're already counted by a event. To the, the only time I on the field is in the field. I think the ground there is a fine too. But heroes just slip right around the back of them. Then. Yeah, I'm trying to do this after, but. I should have. I should have. Oh, fuck. Here. Oh, fire's current sphere. Took me a uh, lot of fuck. Dude's already gone. I've lost some of the match. Damn lion. He, he's a kid. He'll end up throwing out that first. And with damage on the era, it does. Uh, the PL top hit. And Hoofstrin, who kept the Beastmaster out of play with the top off. Now, just down one by one. And then, GG. The inevitable is no longer played. Number one, the best three in the way of Nogany. For a very convincing really? execution into the game. Uh, I skipped because the only thing that came out of this trade was like the, uh, the inventor for Quick. Well, I see Zuzu's fake way of fighting game right now. When I'm going into that game, thinking about who I will be banning, like, I think his boy comes on top and you just kill the six here. And of course, swapping over puck 